For this week's project, we're going to use Adobe Illustrator to create um, an intricate compound path that we can use, or compound shape that we can use on a die cutting machine to create an intricate die cut. Um, this is inspired by a form of artwork called paper cutting, and uh, paper cutting dates back quite a long time and as you can see some of these are absolutely intricate very gorgeous um, and we'll be doing a similar thing I'll, not with an exacto knife and a cutting mat uh, but with Adobe Illustrator so the first thing we're going to do is find a quote that we want to use um, I've chosen a quote by Will Rogers that says um, something to the effect of if there's uh, not if there are no dogs in heaven then I want to go where they go um, and so I'm on openclipart.org openclipart.org is one of my favorite sources for uh, vector based images one of the reasons I really love it is their terms of use um, openclipart.org was originally part of the open office project and so as I scroll to the bottom of their main page I'm going to click on share and use images and you can see here that all of the clip art um, on this website is released into the public domain so that means that you are free to use them in your projects without concern uh, for violating someone else's copyright um, I do recommend that uh, if you're doing something for commercial use and you choose to use an image from uh, open clip art I would recommend uh, printing a screenshot of the page and saving it for your records just so you have that uh, down the road in case you should ever need it um, so we're going to start by browsing for or searching for a dog silhouette because my idea for this I like this dog silhouette here so I'm going to click on this dog silhouette one thing about open clip art that can be a little confusing is it is an ad based site or ad supported site so what you want to do is scroll down and you're going to choose the orange download button uh, this is going to give you a file called an SVG file or a scalable vector graphic file uh, when we download those um, they look like this they just have a little uh, default icon in this case I'm on a PC so it's an Internet Explorer icon uh, oftentimes on a Mac it will be a Safari icon um, and that's okay don't worry about that uh, it, SVG stands for scalable vector graphic and it's a, a web based format so now that I have my silhouette I can go ahead and close this and I'm in Adobe Illustrator. I have already set up my artboard and this is just your standard eight and a half by 11 inch uh, letter size piece of paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do, um, I'm actually gonna get my text tool and paste my quote. So here's my quote. If there are no dogs in heaven, then when I die, I want to go where they went, Will Rogers and I thought that was a nice sentiment so I'm just gonna move this, we'll set it over here for use later and the next thing I'm gonna do is I want to go file place and I'm gonna get the graphics I selected for this project um, I have a dog silhouette that I'm going to use so there's our dog that we just downloaded from um, from open clip art and I also had a couple other things I wanted to maybe use this dog bone and I could have drawn the dog bone myself but in the interest of time I found one that I liked and last but not least uh, I also found a sun that I like dupe that wasn't that's not the one this one right here and so I have a few shapes that I like and then I'm gonna need to draw one myself so I'm real quick gonna draw a cloud and in this case I'm gonna use the blob brush I really love the blob brush tool um, the blob brush tool 
lives in our toolbox with our other content creation tools and it's the only one in that set that does not have a little corner tab it's the only one that doesn't pull out um, the hotkey is shift and the letter B and the blob brush is cool because what the blob brush does is it actually allows you to make a shape uh, and you can use the square bracket the the left hand square bracket will make your brush smaller the right hand square bracket will make your brush bigger and I'm going to give myself a new layer here real quick because I just want to make a cloud shape real quick so there's my cloud nice fast blob brush cloud okay so I'm gonna think about how I want my picture to look and I'm gonna to have to do a little fixing of some of these other shapes ultimately I want all of my shapes to just be a single path and a solid color so my cloud happens to be a single path my dog is a group with a layer but ultimately if I drill down in that group then layer then path I can take that path and pull it outside of the group there's my dog the dog bone has again layers and layers and layers I'm just gonna select all three of them and I'm going to get my pathfinder um, pathfinder lives uh, it is a tab or if you can't find it the tab looks like uh, two boxes intersected that's our one of our commands in Pathfinder and it also lives under window so in this case I'm going to use the unite option and that will create a solid shape out of all of the pieces that exist and I'm going to color in black just so I know where he is and then I have the Sun over here that I need to contend with I'm going to look at my layers and see what it looks like it's a group with lots of shapes ultimately the shape I'm most interested in is just the primary shape so I'm gonna see if I can pull that out of that group and what I end up with that's perfect so I'm gonna fill that with black and get rid of the stroke now I have the solid shape I'm after and I can take the rest of that group here's the group of the Sun the center and the face on it and I'm just gonna take that group and throw it in the trash can so now I'm all ready to start with my composition and this is gonna require a little bit of thought because ultimately what I'm looking for is a composition that when it's complete is all one shape everything is either cut out or connected in a way that I could cut it out of a single piece of paper and have the entire uh, piece of art still exist so the first thing I'm going to do is move my son over here for me I thought it would be really cool if I had a cloud and the Sun coming out from behind the cloud and uh, the dog looking up at the cloud and then the quote so I was going to reverse a lot of this out of the quotation and I'm gonna have to resize some of these I'm just uh, selecting them and then holding down my shift key to resize them proportionally move the Sun over a little bit and I actually want to make a second copy of this cloud because I'd like one of them to be white that'll show me the part that is cut out and then I would like one of them to be black so I'm gonna hold down the option key notice my cursor changes and I can just drag and make a second copy of that I'm gonna go ahead and change that black again and I want to make sure that everything is connected in some space so we'll get to that in a minute but I will actually have to connect parts of the Sun to the cloud but I wanted to have that cloud feel included in the image so we'll look at that in a minute uh, I'd like a rounded rectangle shape here so that I can cut my dog out of that I'm gonna grab my dog bring him to the front object 
transform or arrange bring to front and that's going to bring it to the front of the layer that I'm currently on notice I have things on several layers here and I'm going to go ahead and move them all to the same layer we'll just grab all these things we'll select everything on layer 2 and by grabbing the red box and dragging it down to layer 1 all of those items move to layer 1 so now I can just delete this second layer and I'm going to take my dog and I'm going to change the color of my dog I want parts of my dog to be out of our shape there uh, but I'm going to change the color of my dog to white and I'm going to give my dog in this case I'm going to give my dog a stroke and I'm going to make the stroke on my dog um, oh, 16 points and I'm going to use the stroke panel to align that to the outside of my image and the reason I'm doing that is when I do that notice now I have this connected edge so I'll be able to cut parts of the dogs uh, paw and body out and keep it connected to our space. So I'm actually going to make that outline a little smaller. I think 16 points is a little drastic. We'll go down to about 10. And I accidentally got myself in isolation mode. And I want to grab these things rearranged just a little bit. I want to keep everything on the piece of paper so that when we go to cut we can cut out of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper with no problem and I think I want to twist this bone, rotate the bone. I was thinking the bone would be a fun underlying piece so we'll turn that white as well and I'm gonna have to bring it up in the order so the bone is way down at the bottom and I need to move it up there we go and now last but not least I have to figure out my text so my text going to come right in here and I have to make some decisions about uh, typeface and size. Uh, now in Illustrator, when I'm working in Illustrator, one of the things that you'll notice is if you choose from the character box, um, you don't get to see the preview of the text. However, if I actually get my character panel out, so this lives under type and character, and I pull that down, then I'll actually get a preview of the text in the typeface. So that's a little known trick. Um, it does make it easier when you're trying to select a typeface for a project sometimes to be able to see exactly what you've got. The typeface I've decided to work with in this project is called Chunk 5 Roman and you can get Chunk 5 Roman. Uh, it is a free typeface from the League of Movo Movable Type and it's available on a website called fontsquirrel.com. Uh, so that's where you can find that. And so now I'm going to change the color of my type to white. I'm going to rearrange it in my path, in the order of my paths and then I'm just going to come over here and get it set. Now this text will be cut out of the piece of paper. The white areas will go away. Um, so the thing we have to consider when we work with a typeface like this one is connecting the counters. The counters are the open spaces in the text. So uh, the, the hole in the O, the hole in the A, the center piece of the E. So we'll look at how to connect those here in just a second and see how, if we can't make this the most lovely thing ever. So make sure we get the quote in there by Will Rogers important to always make sure that we give attribution when we're working with quotations. Okay. 
and get rid of the Pathfinder here. And our character dialog box. And we can make some decisions as to whether or not we need those letters sometimes, or the counters. Sometimes it's not a big deal if they're not there. Sometimes we really do want them there. And if we want them there, the way that we're going to do that is we'll use our blob brush tool or our line tool and we'll create just a small um, line that connects the counters. So I can come in here with my E and just draw a line in the place that I think makes the most sense. That might be right here. And I'm going to actually change the color of that line and make it black. I'll grab this one and do the same thing. Make it black so that we can see what we're looking at. Get the blob brush again and connect these as we see fit. Oftentimes it's just making an extension. Um, we have a long chunk of type here so in this case there's lots of little extensions to make. Once we have this process done, then we're ready to convert our text to outlines. And we're ready to start combining these elements into a compound path. And we will do that in our next video.